this day of Women's History Month, I greet you, peace and abundance, as I advocate for the mothers, the resilient ones. And today I bring you Queen Reverend Greta Willis, her son rest in peacefully, Kevin L. Cooper. Ashe. Well, um, good morning. My name is Reverend Greta Willis. I live in Baltimore City and um, I've lost my youngest son, Kevin L. Cooper, by police brutality of August the 12th of 2006 at the tender age of 14 years old. This has been a long and a tedious journey. You know, it's one of those um, pieces in life that we didn't ask for as mothers. We was thrust into this space of losing our children by the hands of law enforcement who are there, should be, to protect and serve and care for the community in which they don't. In some instances, you know, our children's lives are stolen away from us, but the, his, this journey has brought me in a place where I can speak more because my son is no longer with us in the physical sense, but in a spirit, spiritual sense, he will always be here with me. His name will always be lifted up everywhere that I go. I will share with everyone about his tender life, 14 years of good life. He was a brother, he was a son, he was an uncle, he was a friend, and he had just completed his first summer job, his first place of employment, getting to know himself um, and experiencing emotional crisis his life should not have ended untimely in the way in which it has done. But it has brought me in a space where I have met so many resilient women. Ms. Gwen Carr is one who just took the mothers and embraced us with love. And we can embrace other mothers as they go on this same journey, the same path in which we're going on. And the path is a path of resilience, a path of love and tender careness for one another as we are fighting the laws and bringing about different changes, positive changes in our communities so that others can live. Well, first of all, I would truly like to thank you from just remembering with our kings because they were a great jewel in our crown as being a mother to birth a child into the world, bring them forth that God has given us to be that nurturing portion of their lives. They were our children and to keep their names alive, to continue to allow it to go forward and not let it die or be swept under the rug. I thank you and all that God has given them to you to be able to speak to the heart of man and to keep this in the forefront because it's an ever going trend in different places across the country as a whole. Um, as to the audience, I just like to say, you know, to don't allow anyone to write your story. Always write your own story, tell your narrative, speak your truth, because there's power when you speak the truth and that power will resonate for years to come, it will encourage and empower other people to let them know that they can continue to go on. When things happen in our lives, and yes, we're knocked down, but it's only temporary, it's only momentarily, but continue to get back up and fight. When you fight, you fight with that strong voice that you have and fight with a pen. It's a small little thing that's in your hand but it will write and change some things for a lifetime and for generations to come. Absolutely. Um, it was a powerful night because God has brought together some powerful and resilient women to the mothers, um, you know, not taking it away from our men, but when mothers come together, when the voices of a woman speaks, she speaks with commandment and she speaks with power and with grace. And the women that were there were powerful mothers from across the country, from California, Florida, 
different places that Ms. Gwen had invited us all. And as we came together, we encouraged one another. We drew strength from each other. And when one is not at the same level where we are at this portion of our journey, we're able to pull them up and bring them alongside us so that they won't be left out or left or standing alone. Well, I thank you. Um, you continue to stay strong and to keep our men in the forefront because the world beats them up enough and we don't need to beat them up. We need to encourage them to go forward. And their lives should not be cut short by any means. No one should, should play the judge, the jury, and the executioner of their lives because God made us all as individuals and as strong people. And so anyone else outside of his powerful hand have no right to take the life of no other human being. So I thank you from keeping their names in the forefront. 